button. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another sneak preview of the Bull City International Film Festival. Today, I'm joined with writer and director of the short film Last Day on Earth, Mark Martinez Jordan. Say hi, Mark. Hello, hello. Thanks so much for having me here in this virtual place. And for Thank you for having your dog with us as well. I still think I'm saying hi. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I always start off with this first question. How did you get into filmmaking? Well, um, I just, I always, uh, since I was a teenager, I always liked like this kind of uh, working with cameras. I shot very, very shitty short films, but there was like short films made by me and my parents and and then I just, I just like it the way that all the um, pipeline of work, like uh, writing, uh, having an idea, writing, uh, shooting, and then editing. I, I love the process. And then I started studying like uh, informa informatic engineer, but then at the six months I say like, fuck it, I'm gonna make cinema. And then I went to, to, um, to, one, to one, of the mo well, one of the most important schools in, in Catalonia, in Spain. It's called um, SCAC, it's abbreviation. And then uh, there I, I was like four years studying cinema and then, and then I graduated as a director, as a director. Wow, so you've had a really long career doing this at this point, yeah. Well, since uh, I was 20, now I'm 51, so it's like uh, nine years like shooting short films and I mean, I don't even earn my life as a director, but uh, yeah, I always have time to shoot things and to make short films. Nice. So uh, for your short film, Last Day on Earth, uh, how did you come up with the idea of taking these time tours, as well as all the specific rules, like with the Iberi Save the Iberian Fox Mask? Well, it, it was a very strange, the process, because um, at the beginning, uh, one festival from Italy, they asked me to, to take, part in a, uh, take part in a contest that was like for four days, uh, uh, four members of my team, we go to Italy and then in four days we shot a short film. And then we have to make all the process, like shooting the short film and also editing. And then at the end of the, at the closing ceremony of the festival, we screen the short film and the winner is like won the prize. But what happened is I, I write, and the only thing that had to be in the script is that everything had to happen inside an airport. And then I just think about this strange, like this um, um, time travel story in an airport, like um, about a person that is trying to save uh, her wife, his wife for taking a plane because the plane is gonna crash and all this stuff. But then the contest got canceled because a uh, terrorist it was, it was so funny because the, the script was about terrorists, ter a terrorist attack, and then a, a real a terrorist threat attack make all the contests get cancelled. So <laughs> it's like something meta-cinematic, meta meta-cinema. And then uh, one year later, we 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 want, we want we still continue wanted to shoot the short film, and we had the script, and when we changed the location because shooting in an airport is very expensive, and we decided to make it in a park, and, and then we, we changed some things of the script. But the, this board, like, for a, for a contest that that had to, from a story, that had to happen inside an airport. Wow. And also because one of my favorite short films is uh, La Jete, uh, from Chris Marker, and then I always wanted to make, like, a kind of short film, like, more like uh, a short film that talks about time travel, about um, but not in the classical way about trying. Um, yeah, because you got class. to kind of move around all these time paradoxes, like Back to the Future stuff, because you had it yeah. sort of as a scheme. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I wanted to make something that was like um, more like humoristic, not like very transcendent. Like, oh my God, it's a dude in a fox mask and. And also, and also, I always put, I always work with, uh, in my short films, I always work with people that dress like as an animal. I don't know why I do that, but I feel that <laughs> I feel very, very comfortable with that. So uh, this short film also, I wanted to put this, this kind of uh, character that doesn't have like a facial recognition, but, but I wanted to give, the, give him uh, something very characteristic like the fox mask. It, so your story is really set up to have sort of a mix of this drama and tension with this sort of yeah. absurdist levity and humor. So I'm wondering uh, how you were able to kind of work both in so well and kind of very seamlessly. Right. I mean, comedy and the, and, and, the, and the humoristic thing, it's something that also normally it's, it's funny, of course, but it's got something of empathy, I really think. I mean, when you are laughing, they always say that comedy is about laughing about some person, but sometimes I think that people will laugh at somebody is because in some way they feel identify, like, oh my God, this is so funny because maybe sometimes it happened to me. And then I try also to create a story that, um, that, 
these are uh, make people being lost in, in 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 the way of how they feel in terms like a part of the show film is like practically comedy but then at some point there is like a change and it's like more drama 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 and then i think that this it is good because uh, you've the, um, the audience feel like um, lost at some point, you know, like, and I think that this, this is good because it's like, uh, at some point it's like people think that this is a comedy, but then it's a drama and people is like, wow, what the hell, this changed a lot. And, and also I think that this makes like the audience um, catch the attention, but at the same time, they just um, had no defense uh, against that, you know? Like when it's a comedy, it's like everybody's like, ah, okay, this is a comedy and they stay in the mood of a comedy. But when it changes to a drama or it's a drama and then it comes comedy and then it's drama again, it feels, I think that the defense of the people uh, gets down and it's more, more easy to get identified to, and to arrive emotionally to people, you know? I want to kind of touch on how, how uh, you are the writer and the director of this short film. Yes. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea of what this entire process was like uh, from both positions? Because you, you know, you wrote the script and then you had to actually direct it. So how... Uh, how, how did you work those roles both at the same time? Well, I try just <clears throat> in the script process, what I'm trying to do is if I know that I'm going to use voiceover, I try just to create like a very basic voiceover. Like, okay, the, this voiceover is going to help uh, my BOP, my actor, and everybody that works in the project to understand what is going on. And then uh, it's like, it's, it's, I don't know if it's like an script, maybe it's like um, a technical script, like the actions that they, they are happening uh, with a, a little voiceover that explains how the character feels and all this kind of stuff. But it's something more like, um, it's not like a classical script. And then in the edition process, I, I, I put all the, all the footage together and then I try to rewrite a little bit how the character is feeling and I try to, um, put a voiceover because it's very difficult when you are like writing a voiceover with a project before shooting it. It's very difficult because to imagine how this voiceover is gonna behave when the image is actually in the movie, you know? Like mm -hmm. if you see like, wow, I love these mountains and then you see like the mountains in the image, maybe this, it doesn't need to put this, this sentence, but you, put, you, put, you can come up with another idea. Like, I don't know, but uh, something that maybe is not in the image is more about how the character feels. Uh, as part of the process, you were able to um, really facilitate everything. Was there ever a point when you were like, I want this to be put on somebody else? I don't think that I'm personally in charge of this, but I think it uh, would work through somebody else's eyes. Like, when, when was the point when you had to ask for help? Well, um, I asked for help uh, in the edition process because uh, sometimes when this when I write these stories, sometimes there are things, things that they are only funny for me. And, uh, you know, like, oh, the joke is perfect, but nobody gets the joke or, or like, it's not actually funny, the joke. Or also about the rhythm of the short film. Like, sometimes I think that the rhythm is correct, but people get bored or people think that it's too fast, the story, because your last, your last, your last in air has this first act that you have to explain like how the time travel works and, and what is going on and what the character wants to do. And then sometimes for me, like I have been reading 200 times the script and I know the idea. It's like, okay, this has the correct rhythm, but somebody's like, oh, dude, I, I get lost at the minute one of the short film. So mm -hmm. at the edition process is when I ask for help and when I like to show the short film and I like to think what, to, and to know what people think about, if they understand it, if they just connect with the, with the character and all this stuff. And yeah, I think for me, edition is like the main process to, to complete the movie. Um, and sometimes when we are like in the shooting, my DOP, uh, Jose Riera, my DOP is like, he knows he knows me, he knows how, how I work. And then it's like, okay, uh, when I'm just, I don't know how to shot this because I, I try like to normally to put the action in one shot or, in, or put like one general shot and then like two close shots that describes objects and things like this. And sometimes he, of course, he helped me. And, and, and also it's not like helping me, it's not also my therapy is like, no, dude, this is going great. You are making it great because sometimes, you know, as a, normally happens to the Creators like, need like, the validation. Yeah, yeah. I need like positive reinforcement, like reinforcement, <laughs> like my dog. And it's like, 
<laughs> dude, I, uh, like at some point, it's like, dude, I don't know if this is going to be cool, this is going to be understandable. And my director of photography says, yeah, yeah, this is amazing. This is like, wow, this, look, this shot this is amazing. Even if he is lying to me, this is, it worth it, it worth a lie because we keep going and we keep finishing the short film. But I, in, 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 I mean, in the edition is when I really need more help. All my short films have this problem that they make sense in the edition process always. Um, because normally there are a lot of sequence, separate sequence, and they are always connected by the voiceover, and and sometimes, and of course, always need help. Like people, and like I'm, I'm surrounded by people that know cinema more than me, unfortunately, and then I just ask for help, like a little baby or like a little dog. <laughs> uh, but no, you you've proved that you are able to like take over this kind of project because you already have the short film, you have years of experience. Like you're, yeah, you're you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the good thing about these short films is that like, they, they are made with so, so low budget mm -hmm. that at some point it's like, I don't have nothing to lose. Like, if it's like, if this exactly. doesn't work, I mean, nobody cares. Nobody like is waiting to receive money from that. And the only thing that we can wait is positive things. I mean, if, when we started with, with your library on air, we, we take like five months to get the first selection. And we were, the, f the first official selection since we started distributing was like four, five months later. And we were like, oh my God, nobody wants this short film. But at some point they started like selecting, selecting, selecting. And and here we are today, <laughs> like <laughs> in this interview. <laughs> yes. So uh, my last question I always ask everyone, uh, what's next for you? What do you want to do? What other projects do you want to undertake? What do you see yourself doing in the future? Well, I I made two more short films after your last on Earth. One is actually in in this in film festival distribution right now, but it's like we, we started distributing like one month ago, yeah. and and for now it's doing like normal, <laughs> like your last on Earth at the beginning, and then uh, I am also finishing another short film because you know when you are in quarantine. Close it in a house, you have a lot of time to make your own stuff. And then I, I made two short films, one with my wife and the other one is like with my friends, with the same team that I work with your last and And then I'm trying to, I want to shoot a movie, a very low budget movie, um, also with the same philosophy as, as the short film, like science fiction, but a science fiction that works more inside the mind of the audience and not because you are seeing in the screen in the screen in the screen you know like you're not seeing like a spaceship and this is kind of stuff you know you have to to believe it a little bit and yeah this kind of but yeah the idea is like making this movie i don't know how it's gonna take uh, maybe one year or maybe 10 years but and after that i would love to to continue making movies but uh winning some money like earning some money would be amazing uh, that's, that's such the <laughs> That's the creator's constant saying. Every we all need that. Yeah, my, my DOP say always says like, man, you have to accept that you are kind of a genius, and all genius uh, die as a poor person. I was like, oh my god, don't say that, <laughs> please. Oh, the but, struggle. Yeah, no, but yeah, but I think that I, I'm done with short films for now. I mean, I, I don't want to make more short films. Also because I think that, and I, <laughs> uh, the festival circuit every time it gets more difficult and more expensive mm -hmm. and more. It's, it's a lot of effort and I prefer to invest this time like in creating something different like I think that for now long future films maybe I had more chances or chances of distributing without all this kind of extremely competence that there is in the in the world of short films right now all right well thank you so much for doing this interview. thank you so much Hannah yeah sorry for my English because it, I just started like it's, it's I'm getting late to turn talking on but at the end I, I feel more comfortable so no, I, I got every word you were saying, and I'm sure everyone else did. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you on behalf of the Bull City International Film Festival. Everyone yeah. check out his short film, Your Last Day on Earth, when we'll be having more content in the next coming months. Thank you. Thank you so much.